Oh my god, a mirror! He's more blind than me. Is that a pro or a con? I don't know. So... I don't have any way to trigger the death fish. But I have a lot of. He probably has a spear. Oh, actually, never mind that. So I'm gonna need this. There's a decent chance that we are playing the same deck. I could have also played the Veracat. Oh, that's annoying. I don't have a way to deal 2 damage. Other than this random Arcaspore. So bad. So bad. I kind of wish that the devs decided to cut down on the randomness and instead of random they just simply had some kind of rules for all these random effects like this is like random enemy okay but why can it be the highest or lowest enemy or something like that just something simple or the or the 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 leftmost enemy on the opposite row, or the rightmost enemy on the opposite row. There could be some rules, and there could be some play around, instead of just like... Because that could... That could promote... That that does promote interaction. Because if you know that the Arcaspore hits the leftmost enemy on the opposite row, then you just play the Necker Warrior there, and the Necker there, so you can protect your Necker. But random just simply doesn't matter, and it, well, doesn't doesn't really give you a lot of uh, options. Like ultimately, like I knew it was a good idea to play this for a 50-50, but now it was it was a huge, it became a huge problem. I see your fear. That uh, we didn't kill the Necker, so that alone uh, played a significant role in the outcome of this game. Which is a bit annoying. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. You wouldn't have won that last game if it wasn't for the randomness? Not necessarily. But if I would have won it, it's because I made the right calls. So Geralt is pretty good now. Yeah, we can play a harpy egg here. That should be decent. But do you guys agree with that? Or do you guys like randomness? Because I just feel like this is kind of pointless randomness. Most of all, I understand why they have random effects in the game, or at least 
um, not not really unpredictable, but not 100% consistent. I don't know. Like maybe not not even that. But the thing is, like these kind of effects does provoke some some variety, some interaction. But if it's just random, it just doesn't really make sense. I don't I don't mean to complain. I don't mean to complain because I could sound complaining when I talk about these things. Huh. So we can play Frightened or Dormant. Combine with Karen. Is he gonna pass? We might have a better target for Gera Professional later. Basically my point is, a lot of the cards just the, are just unnecessarily random. And they don't have to be. I played the Veracat. On the front row. So we can get 12 points. If I... Wow, 12 points from the Frightened Adornment if I play Kayren. Plus, plus 5, plus 7. So it's gonna be a 17 point swing, which just about puts me in the lead. But we can also play Veracat. Then we can eat that as well. So that's gonna make the Kaeron play stronger. So if he does keep playing here, it's not gonna be just a slight lead, but uh, a more powerful lead, uh, which might be enough to gain a card advantage. But no, he's passing. Do we still play Kayron? Because we can just play the spear. And play this for 10, which is actually enough. And we probably don't need that much consume later. And if we get the Bruce, it, it, it's probably gonna be enough. We have the same hero power. One stick. Do we keep it? Let's say yes for Gera Professional. Do we want that? Not really. Nagolfar. Ooh, that's that's something we have to keep. Imp Manticore. Okay. I'm just gonna pass. Unfortunately, we don't have any artifact counters, so if he wants to play, 
Ooh, Goliath. Thanks. Yeah, actually just thinned my deck. I'm a little surprised that he plays that. Wow. Okay. None of these. Okay. Very weak. I have no consume. We might get consume. But we can only consume two. Best case scenario. Okay, no. It's guaranteed that we can consume two. I have no value generation, other than the spear. Blood of Smart. Let's say I want the value from the egg. He has cooler tests than me. Unbelievable. Only twenty core. Yeah, but that's not gonna help him too much. I can just put some Delphish crap on the board. There you go. Feel free to trigger your Manticore twice, if you like. Even trigger my Manticore. We'll see. Oh boy. So we can only boost allies with Bruce? Beavis. Yep. That's actually nice, so I don't really mind that. Mm, let's go with Imperial Manticore here. Maybe I actually won't play Brewers. Instead I will play Whispers. Because if he plays the Manticore, then Rodfin dies. Then I can also trigger Imperial Manticore. Uh, with uh, the Cyclops. He currently didn't play anything big. That. Oh, fuck me. So the Manticore is pretty screwed right now. It can only kill a one. Uh, before he boosts it, Let's get this over. 
Uh, we gotta take that out. It's still kind of... I don't know. It doesn't really make sense to you. blow up the manticore. Ooh. Fine. Sure. I mean, we, we could have targeted something. No, no, no. That doesn't really work. Yeah, this is fine. I'm actually happier this way. Boost an ally by two. Now we gotta keep in mind that he might be running a very similar deck to ours. No He's not. These lands, so yeah, I open that sucks. Mm, I can just do Cyclops. I'm wondering if I, we should have, like, of course, I have the hindsight now, but we could have also just uh, Cyclops one of the Harpies. Just to try to play around Gimpy. Something uh, to keep in mind for the future. So I got a 9 left, and he's in the lead by 3. Consume is really not gonna help me. Yeah, I'm not optimistic about this. Yeah, that's GG. It's a 12. Get a professional number 2, just kidding. Wish, wish that was the case. In a way, playing artifacts is a bit risky, so I don't really like playing them, but yeah. If he didn't shut down my artifact, I think we still lose. If I... If he didn't shut down the artifact, for some reason, nah nah. He, he played, played well. Good cards. Good game. Well done. If he somehow played around Gimpy as well, like that would have helped. Still, GG. So we got crack here. We definitely don't want Neckers. This is a bit questionable. We can play that. So I have a lot of that fish. So oh, what? Rider goes away for sure. Do we we might want to mulligan nag? Just to have something strong to play later. Why the Neckers? That was the worst card. So we can play the Neckers. In this scenario, I think we have to play the Neckers first thing. Actually, no. He's gonna kill it. He's gonna play his sword. He's gonna just completely blow them up. We're gonna play an Ancient Foglet. Yeah, that's what I expected. This way, at least one Necker is gonna be alive. Or maybe not, if he has another spear. <laughs> These used to be... used to cost 4. Now they cost 7. And still a lot of meta decks just straight up include them. Like, in all archetypes. Like, I have two, he has two. Yeah, let's just pass. The next play is probably gonna be an egg. 
and we're gonna unseen other. Let us put our steel to the test. <laughs> I hate to upgrade Marauder. How is this okay? Deal 4 damage random between your units and deal that much damage to the enemy as well. That would be cool. But this is just a 6 for 4. <sighs> okay. Bottom rider. Why not? I played games in the past, uh, at least one game in the past, that had a, a very unique and actually near perfect system that weekly uh, the players can vote on the top 100 most popular cards on the game, and 20 of those. 20 of the ones that were most voted were simply banned next week. So you wouldn't you wouldn't see that you don't see the same meta from week to week because players are banning cards all the time and uh, changing the meta. So you wouldn't see the same crack deck for a year or like months. I think that's a really good system. I really enjoy that. The game itself was just okay or like mediocre, so it wasn't a great game, but that system was awesome. I think we gotta play Arcuspore here. Too bad, Gwen sucks right now. Not as bad as it did three months ago, but still pretty sucky. Makes me sad every day. <laughs> I think the main problem that they really struggle with is that the Gwent meant to be a... This is the main problem. Gwent meant to be a consistent game, but they but they also want to spice it up because they need to keep up interest long term. And they can't do it with just content releases. And and they they just went a little bit in the wrong direction. Like, let's just remove like relevance of rows. Let's just like remove a row. Uh, let's just make the game more random, and it just it just kind of went in the wrong direction. They didn't try it like, oh, let's just try to have game modes with with uh, different rule sets, or like we have arena, but uh, like there needs to be a core game mode with changing rule sets, and that's ranked. I I know that a lot of players just like at least there is like a par portion of the player base who just enjoys like. Oh my god, I'm gonna play the best deck or like whatever. I'm just gonna play the play this deck for like half a year. Like I changed nothing about it. Like well, I don't know, like maybe they enjoy that, whatever. I don't personally. I like the deck building aspect of the game, so that's kind of what I'm pushing. I like I enjoy uh game modes that are that stay fresh. That there's no other way to put it. Like, if, if players are playing the same bloody decks in one game mode for like months at a time, that's not cool. And and uh, and game modes that emphasize deck building, but arena kind of doesn't do that. It's just a uh, bo boring point slam fest, so I don't like it. So, we can play the Rot Fiend. Or can we play the Rot Fiend? No. Or can I know? So, I can play this for 8. Well, for 5. Uh, well, we gotta keep playing here for sure. And if we play the Rot Fiend, that's not good enough. We can play Vispas here. Damage an enemy. Uh, sure, let's do that. Oh, nice. We got Roach as well. So, the plan for next round is gonna be Rot Fiend, then Brew is followed 
I'm just gonna follow it up. I don't think it's too random, just dull. Um, I don't... Well, it's not necessarily too random, like if you're just talking about the randomness. Hey, Vrovnio, by the way. Uh, but, uh, if I didn't say that before. But, uh, I think the random effects are needlessly random. I just like, they, they can have some specific rule sets, like, like, it doesn't have to be like random unit, it can be the like, highest, lowest, like uh, leftmost in a row or something like that. And just something that reduces uh, the randomness of it, instead of just like, hey, it can be anything. Like, uh, one out of six, there you go. I think it's too random, just dull. So many cards could be designed to by me, aka by some random nobody. Just lazy shit. Marauder, for example, Duran, Old Spirit, basically every bronze card. Uh I think the the problem with that I I don't I don't agree uh necessarily with that assessment that uh they're just completely uh hopelessly unoriginal. But the the old bronze cards had 12 points. They they were at 12 points, they were kind of designed for 12 points, but the current bronze cards uh, range from 4 to 7. That's kind of the power level. Power level. Well, I can't talk. And how do you make bronze cards that are meant to be 4 point different? You don't have too much room. Imagine, imagine if there was like 1 point. How do you make them different? It's damn hard. When, when the bronze cards were 12, you had a lot more room to make different effects. You can just give up like 8 points. Uh, <laughs> and uh, have some other effect, but you, you can't do that anymore. Because they range from 4 to 7, and I think that just really li limits their design. That's my opinion. So I would really struggle. If I was given the the responsibility to design a bunch of different cards, but they all need to be around four points, like that's not much of a room to uh, design. If, if if I was given 100 points to design, I'm like, okay, like we, we might be able to do something more interesting than if I was given like four points or even like one point. Imagine if you had one point. Like, how do you make like 20 different cards that are worth about one point. You can't. It's impossible. I mean, in game, uh, Tribe is kind of the hottest archetype right now. It's almost the pinnacle of synergies when it comes to Homecoming Vent. A shame. Uh, yeah, Tribe is. I don't have a problem with the Tribe mechanic. But I have to say, like, it's not. It's nothing like, even like what we've seen in the past, like... Close beta spies, playing your opponent's board. That's fucking awesome. I wanna see that. Uh, Karen would be nice. I don't know. Do we just pass? I think we're just gonna pass. It's so damn... This is another problem I have. It Well, this not only this version of Gwent, but e even in the past. But it's, it's, it's a bigger problem in this version of Gwent that... Pushing round 2 is so damn risky. Because in the past, you could have done it if you had a finisher deck. You pushed in round 2, you had... Also, you had 0 points. So that didn't change, but in last round, the opposing player, both of you only drew one card, which was massive. If you had a finisher deck, and 
it was just one card versus one card or like two cards versus two cards makes a lot of sense. But now both players draw three cards and you're st still as screwed to push him round two. Almost nobody does it because it's just suicide. It's basically I want to lose a card. Even if you're doing it with like big monsters, uh, quite often you lose a card <laughs> because it's just that bad. Kind of depends on the matchup, but sometimes you just have to push the opponent because they have some dumb combo that you need to uh, prevent. Okay, that's good. Well, we can definitely draw into a good card. Hmm, don't know. Wait, how many gold cards do I have? Two gold cards. So, I can't break the Alfgar if we mulligan the Cyclops. Okay, two spears, here we go. You demand too much innovation from Gwen developers? Uh, not even innovation. I think they just like abandoned some good ideas. But yeah, like the forums are definitely full of, or well, not the forum, like Grand Reddit and whatnot. Just really good ideas. I think more interesting cards will be added in the expansion. Uh, we'll see. Maybe so. Like. This could hurt. Oh my god. But I'm a little bit just considering or just questioning the design choice. Because now the fact that we have bronze cards that range from 4 to like 7, or maybe 8, 4 to 8, that just really limits their design space. In the past, we had bronze cards at 12, silvers at 15, and golds at 18. And, and the bronze cards a little bit range, like some were more synergetic, so they were kind of like to like 11 to, or maybe I could say like at most to 10 to 14, so that was that, so that was their range, but nothing at 4. Basically, we had this provision system in the past. The only thing that really changed a lot is it got, well, but we don't have those brackets anymore that we had like bronze, silver, and, and gold, and they were in like a, in a certain range of how much value they should be. And also they, they got shifted down, so the cards are weaker now. For the most part. But yeah, even the best gold cards are weaker than the average gold ca cards in the past. Uh, we can just go with that guy. Because we really want to promote interaction here. Just, just have nothing on the board, baby. Shall do it my way. Yeah, I definitely want Vivas if we can. Yeah, let's play Rock in the back. I don't know if I wanna trigger the Rot Fiend. If I trigger the Rot Fiend, there is an okay chance, 3 out of 5, that we get 4 value. If I trigger this, it's actually gonna be worse. So I think we should trigger the Rot Fiend. That's really good. Because Manticore is really not worth that much. And I think which drove me off Gwent was binary thing. Either you have answer or and you win. 
Or not, then you lose. Can you bring up uh, an example? Are you talking about the current Vant, old Vant, or just, just in general? I suppose hard counters can be annoying. Like, for example... But, like, the counters are not really done necessarily well, because we have this guy, for example. This is straight-up hard counter to Artifact, and we don't have soft counter to them, so that's, that's a problem. That we have... If you play a Mastercrafted Spear on the board, what happens? Either your opponent has a hard counter, or he has nothing. There's no in-between. There's no in-between. That's all. And uh, they may have not thought about that, but that's literally how it plays out. Either you have a hard counter or nothing. And that's the thing with Vetter as well. Uh, Vetter has uh, the specific guys that are 4 point, and they cost 5 to put in. Again, Vetter, if you play Vetter, not like you should because it's garbage, at most it's break even, but your opponent can have a hard counter or nothing. And that's not good. Not current. But it still applies. Don't you guys agree? I personally would like to see that instead of uh, how the artifacts work, or in addition to how the artifacts work, like this guy had six armor on it. And maybe had another tag on it. Like it had six armor and that's it. It doesn't have any points. It has six armor. If you destroy the armor, the item is gone, it's destroyed, also it can have another tag, it can have equip. So that means it can only be used if you have a unit on the board next to it. So you gotta have a unit that uses the spear and the, the spear can be destroyed because why not? It makes sense. I like the equip one, it makes sense, lore wise. But the thing is, I, w I also really want to push this, hey, it doesn't have to be hard counter or nothing, it ne there needs to be something in between. I would like to see that. Yeah, I'm not gonna eat that. Crack! Let's see how bullshit his last card is. I have at least a seven. Look at that! We killed crack and we're gonna eat everything! Oh, we can't eat that? Unbelievable. Anyway, GG crack. And we beat him, but was it fun to beat him? 
not that much because we just had to deal with the dumb artifacts. It's kind of annoying. But we still got him, so GG.